Okay, welcome. We are here today with Allison Marino, and she is a local violin teacher. Um, I'm Charles David Wright. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm a public school teacher in Torrance Unified. Um, this is not officially sanctioned, but I did want to introduce uh, to some of my I, uh, students the idea of um, studying with a local private teacher. And so Allison's a local private teacher, and she um, you know, we have a relationship with those teachers in our area because they teach privately and, of course, enable our music programs in the public school to be much better. And so we're, we're very good friends and we're not competitors, we're cooperators and we need to help each other out. So uh, we're going to take a few minutes here and get to know Allison and kind of what she does and how she works with her students so that some of my students and maybe some other people that are watching this video have an idea of what it's like to study with a private teacher and uh, what that looks like and meet a private teacher uh, if they want to take violin of course they could take that from allison but maybe if they're thinking about other instruments the idea would be the same so uh, a little bit about myself i am uh, 23 years uh, public school teacher uh, 22 years at the high school level doing uh, choir and guitar and piano and um, so but i'm now down at the elementary school level um, so Allison, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about your background and then I think we're going to share a little bit of um, how to learn violin. Yep. Okay, so I grew up in New England. I started playing violin at age six, um, which was something I always wanted to do. I started asking to play violin when I was very, very young. My parents were like, oh, okay, this is a little strange. So even before six, you wanted to learn like, hey, I want to learn violin. So finally, you're in first grade and they're like, okay. Yes, this is the time. So I finally started taking lessons, which was a really wonderful experience for me. I took privately all throughout my childhood and through high school. Um, and then I decided to major in music in college. I studied violin performance. Since then, okay. um, I've been playing professionally in many different ensembles and full orchestras. I lived in New York City for quite a few years, and now I've moved out here. Um, I've also been teaching, which I absolutely love, working with students. Um, and most recently, I started working for a Harmony Project in Long Beach, which is a really excellent program. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm big fans of both those cities. I, I, I work, work in Torrance, um, but I live in Long Beach, and I actually, uh, two of my children uh, live in New York. So I am big fans and and so uh, of that as well. Okay, so so you came out west and... You've been involved in Long Beach and the South Bay area of Los Angeles. Um, those who don't live in Los Angeles, that's kind of LA, but just a little bit south. Um, it's all connected here in LA, <laughs> but uh, great. So, all right, well, tell us maybe uh, if I was a violin student, what would that look like? Or what, um, you know, what would they begin playing? Yeah, so um, if you want to take lessons, we would do weekly lessons, and then you would be expected to practice at home, um, maybe with the help of your parents if they're interested, or I will teach you how to um, prepare for your next week's lesson. But to start off, we would learn about the instrument, the violin itself, and then um, you also use a bow. So the very beginning, you would learn how to hold the instrument, which is a little tricky at first, but once you get it, it's kind of like a magic trick, and it can just hold, stay up by itself. Which is what? what? <laughs> and then uh, you need to work on your bowl hold, which is another very important aspect. Mm. So in the beginning, a lot of the lessons are making sure your foundation and structure is correct, so it'll be really easy for you to play. And then once all of that is settled, uh, we'll start learning some really fun songs. The first, very first song that we'll learn is uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which I think is Ooh, classic. <laughs> Farmer. 
right. You, you couldn't see my feet, but my feet were moving on that one. I like that. That made me want to dance. Yeah. The happy farmer. Okay. Catchy. <laughs> All right. Well, very cool. That's great. So um, how many years have you been teaching violin? I've been teaching since 2004. So. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So you've got, <laughs> you've got quite a few students over the years. So. I find as I go that I feel I always feel like I'm a much better student than the old me. I mean, a much better teacher. Yeah. Than me, you know, yeah. uh, I'm better than I was 10 years ago and way better than I was, you know, to, at this point in my career, 20 years ago or 25, you know, really kind of cut to the really important stuff and make sure um, kids are on it and also just keeping it fun. Keeping yeah. it as well. I, I know. Um, we talked a little earlier and you, you teach them a little bit about the concepts of music as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, beyond, uh, you know, the really nice form and learning songs, uh, part of learning the violin is training your ear because you don't okay. have any frets of the guitar or keys on right. a guitar. So it's really important that you can hear when you're playing the right notes or in tune. Right. So we do a lot of work with ear training, which is really cool because once you get good at it, you can listen to a song on the radio and then just know how to play it on your instrument. Um, right. And then we'll also learn how to read music. And I really like to introduce music theory at a young age so you have a better understanding of everything that's going on with what you're playing. Right. Right. I, that's the worst name for, to me, the funnest topic. Music theory is our structure of music. It's how to make it, how to, you know, it's like the recipe for music. And people, it's just a terrible name, music theory. It's just oh, it sounds so boring. But actually, it's like if you have the recipe to something, I have the magic ingredients to make great stuff. And so um, there you go. I, I, it's interesting you brought up the thing like here's a guitar and you can see the frets. Um, and violin has no frets. So that means, yeah, absolutely. Violin players has amazing musical ears. Uh, in music school, the pianists and the violinists have the best musical ears by far. It wasn't. It was like those two, you know, those instruments just were above everyone else in terms of their musical uh, listening skills because you always had to keep it in tune and vibrato and um, every moment, um, every moment keeping a note going and changing it. So very cool. Um, well, wonderful. And you play a little bit in the local area as well. I, I saw pictures you, play, you played in some orchestras locally. Yeah, I play in several different orchestras uh, in Los Angeles and the South Bay and a contemporary ensemble, which is one of my favorite groups. I play music from living composers, which is really special. Yeah. For those who don't know, that's really kind of fun, different. You know, it's not straight Bach and Beethoven and Mozart. Like This is some kind of cool, fun stuff, bringing, you know, the old instrument into with some modern sounds and ideas. Do you ever like like do rhythm techniques and stuff on, on that or weird sounds. Yeah, all the, weird sounds. <laughs> yeah, what the, what's one weird, what can, can you give us one weird or some, some sound that you would play in that group? Uh, there's a lot of um, like. Like that sort of stuff. I, I, I'm scared, just scared me. That's like, woo, that's a spooky sound. Yeah. <laughs> on the violin, what? I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> Very cool. Once you know how to play the instrument, then you can do all kinds of stuff that people maybe haven't heard, you know? Yeah. So people, there's the normal way, the normal way to play our instruments. And then once you really become skilled at your instrument, you can use it in all kinds of different ways. That was super fun. <laughs> I, I like, I want to scare me again. Okay. <laughs> that was really fun. All right. Well, it's been so good to meet you, and I hope uh, we're going to actually, uh, in the link, put your information um, below to your website. You have a website that I went to that's very nice, and so if you're interested in lessons, go to that and contact Allison, and, and um, I encourage you um, to do that if you're interested in the violin. Um, if you're thinking about other instruments, I encourage you to play those instruments uh, as well, and Sometimes we need to try an instrument. So maybe you're like, should I play violin or something else? You know, give it a go, give it a try. And then, you know, you'll know in time within six months or a year, you know, like I, I'm not enjoying this and this is not the instrument for me. Or you go, I'm loving it. And I just can't wait each week uh, to play more and learn new skills. 
and it gets very exciting. Music, the hardest part to me is the start. And as your skills grow, the fun grows, and it just gets more and more fun. To me, music at this point in the game is more fun than ever. I mean, my skills are better than ever, and I'm having more fun when I make music. Um, so just uh, get get into it, give it a try. Um, if you're thinking about the violin, um, Allison's super nice right away. You know, we we had this connection and the cities. Oh, and you had the artwork. I don't have to turn the camera. Uh, we both have a little bit of an art background in our families and things, and that's a Pablo Picasso. If you don't know about him, kids, Pablo Picasso, super influential, and there's a print from Pablo Picasso. So thanks. Good to meet you, Allison. Thank you. And, um, hopefully we get some students from you uh, for this, and thanks for taking your time to talk about violin playing to my students who don't get uh, a chance through my program to maybe um, see that happen individually for them. So thanks for your time and to see you in person when uh, this current time we're in is over. So thanks so much. And we'll look forward to meeting you in person. All right, thanks. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.